Good afternoon, hello, welcome to the Triathlon Dan YouTube channel. Welcome to a video all about the triathlon I did yesterday, which is the Outlaw Full Distance in Nottingham. So it is an Ironman Distance Triathlon, and I finished it, spoiler alert. Uh, first of all, thanks to being a uh, daily vlogger, Liz had to go and change what she was wearing before she came out of the house, because she was wearing the t-shirt she wore yesterday. Of course, she's on the video. <laughs> that, Why not? I didn't wear it. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, this video is gonna be all about uh, pacing, nutrition, uh, well, how I thought the event went, etc. So get ready. First of all, I was going to touch on my preparation for the event, or lack of. I'm in no way set. You laughing? <laughs> what? What's so funny? <laughs> the way you're walking. I, right, we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, I'm in no way like trying. <laughs> like your <laughs> I'm in no way trying to like glamorise not preparing for an event. But I wasn't prepared. I had a run injury. I didn't run for seven weeks, and then I spent the next two weeks running. That's what I went out 20 miles in total. So nettles. Um, well, not ideal. However, you d you deal with the, the cards you dealt, don't you? So that was that. Okay, so the Outlaw Full Course, the swim is in a lake. It's actually a one-lap swim as well, so it's a massive old rowing lake at Home Pierpoint in Nottingham. So that's just a, a, a one-lap affair. Uh, the bike is made up of a, a southern loop and a northern loop. You do the southern loop twice, the northern loop once. That adds up to 112 miles. And then the run is uh, two big laps and then one little lap around the Home Pierpoint Lake, which, of course, if it's two and a bit miles swimming out and back, it's about a 5k around the, around the lake, so it's a long old way. So a nine-man distance race. Let's get into it then. So... Um, how have I recovered from yesterday? First of all, as Liz has just kindly pointed out, not very well. My legs are absolutely killing. I've got blisters on my feet, I'm sunburned, I'm aching up a body. Well done to anybody else who did the event if you did, because I'm sure you're all in the same boat as me and some in worse. So, uh, yeah, just out for an easy stroll, try and loosen the legs up. So, the swim and sort of like the morning of. Standard routine, a uh, bowl of porridge at home before we went to the race, then in transition about half an hour before the start of the swim, I had an OTE super gel, not sponsored by any of these people I'm going to mention, just enjoy the products. Uh, it's 40 grams of carbs, which is like a berry flavour, that goes down well, uh, and I was drinking full steam carb mix, like as a drink before, before the start. Talk a bit slower. Okay, I'll talk a bit slower, thank you Liz. Um, <laughs> I... <laughs> Who's that? You've done one video yesterday, now you're an expert, are you? <laughs> Should we not talk about the first two minutes being in pitch black? <laughs> anyway, uh, so the swim. I can't believe I'm saying this, I actually enjoyed it. So, um, I did a super sick dive to start with, it probably wasn't super sick. I wasn't planning on diving in, but I started, I think I was the third person to start on the pontoon I was on, so I was only like 10-15 seconds behind the, the you know, the, the start first starters. I looked across and I saw Andy Horsfall Turner do an amazing run and dive in, I thought, I love a bit of that. So I did. Probably didn't look the same. Anyway, got into the swim. Uh, it's quite stretched out because of the time trial start. I was a orange hat. I was watching all the orange hats come past me. And then I was watching like the blue hats come past me. And then there's a couple of other colours. I was just counting how many different colours I was say seeing. Uh, so I swam one hour, 12 minutes. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. That's on a par with my best Ironman swim, which I did at Wales a couple of years ago. Uh, felt like I hadn't pushed too hard. Felt like it was just a nice, steady little, steady little stretch. So a good start to the race. Got into T1, we're not going to go too far away, should we start turning around? Oh, another minute, yeah. we'll go around here. I got into T1, um, I've put smooth but sloppy. Uh, everything went to plan, I just don't think I had the sense of urgency that you think I think you need to have in transition. With it being Ironman distance, myself included, people just switch off and think, oh well, it's Ironman distance, you don't need to rush, it's such a long day, which I suppose is partly true. But it's just free time, isn't it? So I definitely need to put more effort into being faster in transition in future. Uh, onto the bike, I have not started a triathlon this year without dropping a bottle and it happened again. I, don't, I didn't mean oh, like, oh my God. I didn't mean like I physically dropped it, like it fell out of my rear bottle cage. So I'd started with about 700 mils of fluid in my uh, down tube. 750 on the bike frame and then 750 um, behind the saddle. Losing a 750 mil with about 80 grams of carbs in was a bit of a, well, it was a bit of kicking the teeth. I had budgeted for losing some, some uh, carbs during the event. So I had like more gels and more cliff blocks for me and stuff, but I hope that wasn't gonna happen. But oh well, it happened and I dealt with it. After about half an hour or 40 minutes on the bike, I just tried to settle into it. I got into a little group. There was myself and two others, and a few other lads like joined us and left us at various points, but the, the main bulk of it was for me and two others. Um, it was a bit too hard for me, so I got three and a half hours in and it absolutely blew up. Um, we, were going, we, were, we were flying, right? I know we're not flying in terms of winning the race, but for, for us, for amateurs, we were flying. We were on for about f between 4.40 and 4.45, looking at the times that the two lads who I was riding with rode. Mm, I'm not that in that sort of shape at the minute, so that was a bit too fast. I got to 
three hours 30 as i said like i'd i think about half an hour before that i don't drank as much i'd not ate as much because it was quite a fast bit of road and it, it got quite hard at times like they were surging quite a lot and i just wasn't thinking about nutrition i was thinking about just hold the wheel obviously at 12 meters or whatever uh, just keep pushing all that sort of stuff and i just think it just hit me and then i'm not kidding i just i just went backwards it was absolutely unreal the first three and a half hours i averaged about 250 watts ish and about 23 and a half miles an hour 24 miles an hour something like that which is a bit crazy for an ironman leg but um it was going all right and then for the last hour and a half I averaged something like 170 watts and about 19 miles an hour just the, the wheels well and truly fell off uh, but because we'd gone so fast in the first like two thirds it meant that even though I did blow up I still rolled in for a five hour bike split so it was 22 and a half miles an hour something like that right. yeah thanks for nodding along clueless yeah so i mean that is something i need to i need to look into but um I don't, i'm not gonna make excuses i think the actual like what i was asking my body to do was a little bit too hard so even if i was to be fueling perfectly and stuff then i, I still might have blown up i'm not saying that all oh, the, the only reason was nutrition it was probably a factor but it was too hard uh, that then made me really really start worrying about the beginning of the run so i got into t2 and i really took it easy because i thought this could go really really wrong i knew i wasn't prepared for the run and finishing the bike with like feeling like i've got no legs was was not this start that i wanted um however got into t2 i sat down got changed and then i thought okay i made up my like nutrition plan on the fly because i've always really suffered with trying to get food down me on the run i've never really had a plan because i've never really been able to get much down me but i took uh, I think I took two or three OTE super gels with me and some blocks and stuff but I only really touched the gels so when I got onto the run I had a gel on the hour and then at the aid stations I didn't take anything I took a little running bottle with um, full steam carb mix in that I mixed quite strong and for the first hour and a half to two hours that's what I had a gel on the first hour sipping my bottle in between and then on the two hour mark I had the second gel I chucked the bottle away Liz sorry if you needed that to be running I did and, uh, um, we'll get another one um and then what yeah so carried on from there and then at about two hours in i started do you want to go first get the gate yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm vlogging right. <laughs> um i started picking up coke and stuff from the aid stations i didn't want to start on coke too early because after a few hours of running and drinking coke it is not good for the stomach so i just eased into that first firstly yeah, firstly a couple of sips i was walking every aid station and then in the second half i was pretty much like stopping at every aid station and spending 30 seconds or a minute or so that's i keep walking i can no, i can, I can do this bit though. okay um, you know, I was spending 30 seconds or a minute or so actually stopping and getting like uh, a piece of orange down me or, um, you know, a couple of cups of water, that sort of thing. In terms of time splits, I was running between nine and 10 minute miling. It was hard to gauge the pace because of all the, you know, stopping at aid stations and stuff. It just skewed it too much. I think when I was running, I was probably running between nine and nine and a half minute miling. But with the stops, it made it a lot slower than that. But that's fine. I was happy with that. I think I went through halfway in 205 and then my second half was between 210 and 215 for a four hour 15 but, uh, run split which I was absolutely so chuffed with I've not actually run faster than that in an Ironman marathon before the only two other like full Ironman distance races I've done were Bolton and Wales so maybe it should have been faster because the course is faster at Nottingham Outlaw but um whatever I was happy with that so that meant that I came in at 10 hours 48 which is a PB for me super chuffed with that um i've thought a lot about ironman distance racing over the last well over the first <laughs> 10 and a half hours yesterday and now more recently on um, you know since since then and i've come to the decision that i'm not announcing my retirement from ironman racing what i'm saying is i'm not doing one until i feel like i'm really ready to do one because it's not something you can really wing i've suffered so much in the night last night it was not good was it liz no. i had to sleep in the spare bed which is a common occurrence in our house anyway but um <laughs> Um, I was shivering, I was hot and cold, sweating, it was not good. Uh, I couldn't even stay up to watch the men's Olympic triathlon, could I? No. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, it really, really hurt me. And that's the case for every Ironman, as some of you guys might know. So, I do have an entry for Wales next year. I'm going to give it a bit more thought in the next couple of days because my other thoughts about Ironman racing is, and feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. This is a big hill. I know, you're going to give you a... Yeah, give me a puff and go um, My other thoughts are... I don't want to say Ironman racing is boring because it's not, but it is not as interesting as a crit race or half distance race or a run race or whatever, because you spend the whole day trying to stay really within yourself. And I know it gets really hard at some point, 
but it's almost like it's a bit low adrenaline and I quite like the high adrenaline of like a bike race or even a half Ironman distance or something so I'm just going to give that a bit more thought over the next few months I've got not got any falls into the rest of the year so no decisions I need to make but um yeah just perhaps some some food for thought but anyway that is my summary of my outlaw full distance race yesterday um I would like to go back to the race I would like to put in a, a you know a better performance but Everybody says that, don't they? I don't think anybody's ever really fully happy with the race they execute. So, you know, who knows? Uh, thank you once again to anybody who's support, bless you, supported or competed or marshaled or volunteered, any of that sort of stuff. Absolute legends. Thanks, Liz, for getting up at some point in the morning. <laughs> Not as early as normal. No problem. That's a high five, don't even hang in. So, that is it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button down below, and we'll see you tomorrow for what we're we doing tomorrow. I don't know. One session for me, probably. Okay. <laughs> I'm not quite sure I'm doing video wise because I am not doing any training, but I'll figure something out, won't I? Yeah, we're yeah. off to the chip shop now. Oh, don't tell them. Why are you telling them that? Yes, you can. <laughs> See you later.